the problem in structural geology is to determine the orientation of a fold uh, when the fold is too large to see in a single outcrop, but when you have orientation data from across the fold, uh, maybe including both limbs and perhaps some data from the hinge. We can see here how we deal with that situation. Uh, in the upper diagram, there's a, a picture of a, uh, um, a fold, and uh, you can see the fold axis is labeled. It's labeled on the hinge of the fold. And there is also drawn a plane called the profile plane, which is the plane perpendicular to the fold axis. And you can see uh, also labeled are poles to the folded surface, and you can see that those all lie in the profile plane. What that translates to on the stereographic projection in the lower part of the diagram is um, uh, that the poles to the folded layers should all lie on a great circle, and that great circle uh, it represents the strike and dip of the profile plane, and its pole, therefore, uh, shown up here, uh, is the fold axis. Uh, now, when we're doing this, we're essentially doing statistics on the projection. Uh, we're finding a best fit line that goes through all of those points on the projection. Um, so it's important to use the right projection uh, for this process. So I'm going to bring uh, PowerPoint to the front here. Um, and uh, these are uh, our tools. Um, and uh, the one you see at the moment is the WolfNet, and this is uh, the true stereographic projection. And you can see that the little squares are much larger at the edge of the projection than they are in the center of the projection. Uh, so those points will be artificially spread out uh, towards the edge of the projection and artificially close together uh, in the center of the projection compared with their real orientations in 3D space. So to allow for that, we have to do this kind of process on an equal area projection. Um, and the net that we use is the Schmidt net, which is the, the net you must use whenever you're dealing with large numbers of data and you have an estimation problem uh, which you want to solve. So over on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see an exercise that we use uh, in Lab 6 of our Structural Geology course. It's a quite a complicated area. Uh, it has actually a refolded fold in it. Um, but uh, part of this exercise involves plotting the orientations of a foliation uh, that is shown by this symbol here. Um, and uh, we're going to take those observations uh, that you can see um, uh, labeled up here, and we're going to plot uh, poles to those orientations on the equal area projection using the Schmidt net. And we're going to do this in PowerPoint uh, rather than uh, the old fashioned way on tracing paper. Um, so uh, the first thing that we're going to need, we're going to need a, a whole bunch of uh, symbols. Uh, so I'm going to make myself some uh, extra symbols here just by uh, option dragging uh, this little cross symbol here. Uh, so that I have a bunch of them. I think I have about eight uh, strike and dip measurements of this foliation. Um, so I'll make sure I have uh, more than eight symbols here. Uh, that should be enough. And we're going to see about um, uh, measuring these orientations. Uh, so the first one I'm going to do down here is this one down at the uh, lower right of the map. Uh, it's a strike of 262 and a dip of 69. Um, so let's uh, get hold of our net and we're going to turn it uh, 262 degrees. Uh, we can do that uh, by entering in a rotation here. Uh, sorry, 282, 69, 282. So we'll enter 282 in there and that has turned the net around. Um, and you'll see that I've added to the net a line on one side and a dot on the other side. This is a reminder to if you're using right-hand rule to always plot great circles on this side and always plot poles on this side. Uh, so if we wanted to make a great circle uh, for 282.69, um, we would go uh, to our home uh, tab here, we would go insert, uh, we would grab a shape, and we would start uh, clicking a great circle through here, and we'd have to make sure we went 69 degrees in from the edge, so 60 is here, so 69 is something like this. I'm doing it quite quickly because I'm not actually going to use this great circle. 
because what we need to do is we need to do polls. Um, but uh, just to uh, emphasize here uh, that when we use poles, poles are lines that are 90 degrees away from this great circle. So whereas we counted in from the edge to plot our great circle, we need to count out from the center 69 degrees uh, whenever we're making a pole. So this is 60 and this is 69 here. Uh, I can use the arrow keys just to get it nice and precisely located. Uh, there we go. And actually, I'm not going to use the great circle anymore, so I'm going to delete the great circle because we're just going to work with poles. Uh, so let's see how we go. Uh, we're going to work through the map here. Uh, the next one is uh, about here um, in the uh, middle lower part of the map, and the orientation is 29082. Uh, so let's go back over into uh, PowerPoint. Um, we'll get our shape options back here, and our strike was 290, so I'm going to change that to 290. Um, hit enter, and that will turn the net around. And uh, the dip here is 82, so I'm going to grab another one of my poles. I'm going to drag it down here, and I'm going to put it at 82 degrees out from the center. Just going to adjust its final position with the arrow keys so that it's where I want it to be. Uh, so now we're going to continue moving around on the map here. We have 287.77. Uh, so I'll get hold of my net again. Uh, to, we can just use clicks to get it to 287. And I want to put a marker in at 77 degrees. Uh, so here we go. This would be 80. So 77 is about here. Again, drive it to where I want it with the arrow keys. Uh, continuing on, I have a point at 295.89, uh, so we'll select the net, we're going to put 295 in here, we'll turn the net around, oops, I typed that wrong, I got 2895, that's definitely not what I want, so let's try that again, uh, 295 and the dip is 89 degrees, uh, so we'll put our marker here just in from the primitive again a couple of adjustments with the arrow keys we'll get it into the right place and working on around the fold this one looks very different 13460 so let's see uh, what that gives us um, get hold of the net I'm going to type in 134 now it's always possible to drag the net around too uh, until you get the uh, right angle starting from the top 90 um, 134, uh, so that will do too. Um, and this time our dip was 60 degrees. Um, so now we're on the other side of the net. Okay, so I initially went to the wrong side, uh, but here's our pole marker as a reminder, and we've got to go 60 degrees out from the center, and that's going to take us to just there. Okay, uh, so moving on around the fold, uh, here we have a measurement at 180.33. Uh, so let's uh, put that one in, make sure we select the net each time, uh, 180, enter, um, and the dip is 33 degrees, so I'm going to go 33 degrees out from the center, there it is. Now, uh, this one was snapping onto my guides, uh, so this is a case where you could turn off the guides, uh, but you can always overcome that by using the arrow keys to get it where you want to, if it snaps to a position uh, that you don't want it. So there we are, close to uh, 180.33. Uh, so we're going to go on and do 217.31, 217. Press enter to turn the net around, um, grab another one of our markers, put it on 31. There we go. Um, we've got a 213.31 over here um, on the left hand side. Uh, so you have to make sure you select the net every time. I'm just going to use the arrow keys to dial it down to 213, uh, which is quick and easy. Uh, 213, 31. So that's going to be very close to the last one. 
Uh, you can also zoom in if you want to, uh, to get a little bit more precision. There we go. Um, so continuing to work systematically around here, let's see where we have more measurements. This is a second foliation, so we're not interested in that one at the moment. Here we have 225.32. Uh, uh, so we can put that one in. I'm going to dial it up to uh, 225. And um, I need to zoom out a little bit because I've lost my markers. There's one, uh, 225.32. So we're going to put it at 32, which is right there. That's well placed. And then it looks like the last one is over here at 220.32. And this is going to be right in amongst all of the others, several very close together. I have a strange artifact on my screen here where it looks as if I'm moving two markers, but it was only one, so that's fine. Uh, so there we have um, actually uh, 10, I think, uh, markers on the screen, and it looks as if they do define a nice girdle distribution, which will be the profile plane of our fold. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to fit that to a great circle. And I'm going to, um, just to be systematic about this, I'm going to make sure that I fit it to a great circle, which is on the right-hand side of the net where I've drawn a line there. So that's my place for drawing great circles. Uh, so what I need to do is to turn this around until I can get all of those x's to be as close as possible to a single great circle. And this is where the estimation comes in. And the equal area net uh, gives us some assurance that we're treating all our uh, x's reasonably equally. Um, so my best bet is to get them very close to that uh, 60 degrees of dip line there. I think that's probably my best bet. And now I'm going to, um, this time, draw the great circle. So I'll get hold of my curve tool here. I'm going to click uh, every 20 degrees or so, drawing my best fit great circle through this collection of points. Uh, so there we are. So now, um, we need one more marker. I think I run out. I used all my markers, so I'm just going to duplicate uh, this one here, um, and I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to hold down the Option key, um, and I'm going to move a copy of it over here somewhere, which is going to be the pole to the great circle that I've just drawn. So the great circle rep represents a plane dipping at 60 degrees. Um, so my pole is going to be over here, and it's going to be plunging at uh, 30 degrees, and that is going to represent my fold axis. So there we go. Um, and uh, to measure its orientation, um, we always use this uh, top marker on the uh, net to measure the plunge and trends of lines in this new digital world. And so I'm going to turn that top marker around, and that will uh, in theory, enable me to read off the trend here. I've rotated my net 294, so my trend is 294, and my plunge, as expected, is 30 degrees. So we have used 10 measurements of foliation, and uh, by plotting them on an equal area projection, we have been able to determine uh, that the fold axis is... Um, uh, oriented uh, plunging at 30 degrees and towards a, uh, a trend of 294 degrees. Um, so uh, that takes you through what's known as the pi construction for fold hinges on the equal area projection.